When it comes to selecting the perfect screen printing press for your shop, many variables must be considered. Now, the first variable you must be thinking about is, well, what are you really trying to do or what gap are you trying to fill? Uh, different presses are capable of different things, or essentially uh, we purchase a larger press for higher expected volume versus a smaller press for uh, more lower volume, quicker orders. So it, it's really gonna come down to first identifying what exactly the production area of your shop is looking for in that sense. Now, when it comes to screen printing presses, there are two primary types. Uh, there are manuals and there are automatics. A manual press has to be printed by hand by a person in which the ink is being dragged through um, the screen and printed onto a product by a human being. An automatic press is still being kind of ran by a human, but that human just kind of is just pushing a button or essentially a foot pedal and it's driving the whole operation, um, allowing for much quicker productivity and more accurate printing among several other great advantages. So when it comes to selecting either a manual or an automatic press, uh, first factor would probably be what's your budget? Uh, an automatic press is gonna be a heck of a lot more than a manual because again, um, it, it's automatically doing the majority of the work versus the manual making the individually manually uh, print the artwork. When it comes to uh, selecting which type of printer, again, it's gonna come down to the production needs of the shop which is gonna heavily revolve around the average size order or amount of colors in the order. When it comes to an automatic press, they might print uh, orders at a much quicker pace. I mean, you could talk about five, 600 shirts an hour very easily on, on a lot of uh, automatic presses versus when you're manually printing, I mean, you're lucky to get out 50 to 100 at the most in an hour, and that's in one color without an underbase and so forth. So in order for you, um, to choose which type of press you're, you're gonna be looking at, you need to know one, what your budget is, and then two, what are the needs, and, and, and how big is that average order that's gonna be used, uh, with automatics taking longer to set up typically, but just being able to kill it in actual production mode. A manual, on the other hand, let's say we have a 12-piece uh, order, so we're printing 12 shirts with two colors. A lot of time, I'd much rather put that on the manual than try setting up the automatic for just 12 shirts because um, again, getting within the automatics uh, settings to, to get it ready is, is a lot more difficult. Uh, when you have an automatic screen printing press, it's going to have uh, its heads right over the platens, meaning that it's much more difficult to actually put the flood bar, the squeegee, uh, and, and get everything in and out compared to a manual, which is a lot more open space because the screens are being held uh, kind of at a 45 degree angle. A manual press has um, essentially the bottom platens that spin in either or direction, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, and then the screens are held right above them and they as well will spin in either clockwise or counterclockwise mode. It allows you to essentially uh, set up all your different colors and then print one at a time on the actual uh, main palette that's gonna be sitting in front of the screen printer itself. Um, what also is commonly used with manuals and automatic presses are flash drivers. On a manual press, it just hovers over one of the platen locations and it does not affect the amount of colors versus on an automatic, because the screen print heads are sitting directly over the palettes and we have to flash over the palette, we actually um, really must take that head out and put the flash in there uh, whenever we need to be flashing any color. Most of the time, a white underbase. And then we must account for an open space in the actual press so that the ink does not gel or cure into the next ink color. Now, um, another thing about automatic presses, when it comes to the uh, flash units, you cannot just buy any flash unit off the street. You need to be buying a flash unit that is exactly built for that version uh, and model of your press. Um, another great thing to know between the two is the footprint that each one of them are gonna take up. A manual press is much, much smaller versus an automatic takes up quite a bit of space. Uh, and again, if both are carousels, which 95% of uh, screen printing presses are in the States, 
they're going to rotate in a perfect circle, meaning they have a perfect circumference that needs to be uh, given to them uh, in order for them to freely flow. Now, another important thing to think about is the actual conveyor dryer that's going to be taking the shirts from the press. Because the last thing you want to do is buy a press that is able to output 600 shirts an hour and all you have is a dryer that can take 300. That, that doesn't work. So make sure that the conveyor dryer is going to be able to handle the capacity of the press or you're going to need to buy another dryer. You also sometimes might use a bigger dryer with two presses on either side and that is um, a really nice uh, capability sometimes to let an auto be on one side and a manual on the other. So uh, the auto can be doing the big run jobs, the manual can be just doing several smaller run jobs. Um, but again, manual printing has to be done physically by an individual, which means there's a little bit more of an art to it. Um, both, both types of presses, you have to load the garment onto the press. Not terribly hard, but if you don't do it right, it's not gonna look, the, the finished print isn't gonna look good. But a manual printer has to really, um, the individual doing the printing has to be always getting that right angle and pressure and so forth that is a lot harder to consistently deliver compared to an auto. Uh, an auto is going to be typically using either a belt, chain, or nowadays more or less air-driven pneumatics in which uh, the squeegee and flood bar are all always getting that very consistent uh, amount of pressure and so forth versus when you're uh, doing it you know, by yourself uh, as a person, you know, shirt one versus shirt 400 in the day, you're going to be tired, you're going to be feeling carpal tunnel in your wrists and all that, and your, your, your stroke is going to be all over the place. It's also really important to realize that every individual who manually prints, their, ink, their, their job is going to come out different. So if you're going to manually print a job, the same person needs to do all of the actual production for that order in order to make sure every shirt is pretty much coming out as consistent as possible. Otherwise, if you have multiple different people uh, kind of stepping in at different times to manually print, the uh, finished product's gonna be kind of very much so all over the place. As you can see, there's many variables that go into deciding what press to purchase, um, and it's gonna come down to your shop's needs. Um, the last thing to consider is the actual pallet and print head amounts of the actual press. So presses are going to be sold with two numbers in front of them. It's going to be like a six and four. It's going to be a six head four station press. Now manual presses, you can only print one color at a time. So the amount of pallets often doesn't matter as much as the amount of print heads. Um, and what's also cool about a lot of manual presses are they're typically uh, already drilled so you can add additional heads or platens to them uh, so you can essentially expand upon the machine but not have all those upfront costs right from the get-go. Um, when it comes to an automatic, because that flash unit takes up two heads, unlike on a manual, whenever you're choosing an automatic uh, press, you need to be taking that into account. So it's a good idea, don't typically look at buying anything less than eight print heads on an auto. Um, eight to 10 print heads is pretty standard with six to eight stations um, that are gonna be going on at the same time. Again, an auto can print a color at, at you know six colors at the exact same time. That means you must have six stations available, plus you need to take off and a, and a put on. So that's why you need those additional two as well. Uh, typically, a lot of the times you're going to have more stations than heads on an automatic versus a manual. It's the reverse uh, because of that. Now, it doesn't matter what type of press you get, you're going to need micro registration. Automatic presses automatically already have micro registration built into them because if they didn't, they'd be virtually almost useless. Uh, when we print multicolor designs, we need to be able to get that artwork to sit perfectly next to one another onto. Uh, the product. And in order to do that, we need micro registration adjustments that allows us to kick the screen very slightly uh, at different angles or left to right, back to forth. Um, on a manual press, this is not always standard. But when you're selecting, if you're going to buy a manual press, you have to get them. I mean, you have to have micro registration. Otherwise, um, it is so much more difficult for the end user of the press 
to register multicolored designs and not have um, you know a white outline and so forth and other problems uh, if you don't. Again, many different variables go into selecting a press. That is why if you have any questions on how to select the perfect screen printing press for your shop, please do not hesitate to contact us.